Guys, minus 71.2 degrees Celsius is the lowest temperature ever recorded here in Oemia Kon, the coldest inhabited place in the entire world. However, today is much warmer than that, it's something like minus 45, and what we're going to do is continue our crossing by land from Yakutsk to Magadan. As you guys could see in my previous videos, not long ago I decided to cross the entirety of Siberia by land. After spending four days in a row on a Russian train where I met all sorts of happy drunks and another 22 hours on an old Soviet bus to the coldest village in the world, I was now in Oymyakon and ready for the final stretch of the road to Magadan. Oymyakon sits in the middle of the Kalima Highway. The Kalima Highway is known for being one of the most dangerous roads in the world and definitely the most dangerous one in Russia. It is not just the fact that it runs for 2000 kilometers through one of the most sparsely populated areas in the world, across frozen rivers and deep forests where there are more bears than people. With temperatures in winter ranging from minus 40 to minus 70, the Kalima is unofficially referred to as the coldest road in the world. Of course, we're still 1,500 kilometers away from Magadan, so don't worry, we won't be able to reach Magadan in one day. However, what I want to do is reach at least as far as the village of Usnera, which is sort of halfway through. So I want to find out what it's like to travel across Oimiakon and Usnera on one of the most dangerous and significant, in terms of history, roads in the entire world. Fascinating, I can't wait! Susanna, do свидания. Спасибо, всего хорошего. Счастливо. Здравствуйте. Susanna, the owner of the only guest house in Oymyakon, had told me the night before that the day after there would be a marshutka, an illegal taxi that locals organized to transfer people and provisions between the villages of the Kalima. This marshutka was going to travel towards Magadan, so she was kind enough to arrange a seat for me. So as I mentioned in my previous videos, the Kalima Highway is this 2000 km stretch of unpaved road between Yakutsk and Magadan. It is so incredibly remote that there is no public transport at all along this route and there are two main ways that you can travel on it. The first one is by hiring a personal driver which is incredibly expensive and in this way you will travel in a convoy of at least two cars just in case one breaks. Or you can find yourself a seat in one of the many illegal shared taxis that regularly travel along the highway. That's what I've done because number one is cheap and second of all that's how locals do it. However, it's a bit risky because if this car were to break for whatever reason, be it because of the cold or just because of the gravel that we're going to pass on, we're pretty much screwed just because it's one of the most inaccessible areas of the world. There's no phone signal at all and traffic is not existing so we would pretty much freeze to death <laughs> and yeah this is pretty much what I mean when I say highway it's pretty scenic though I'll tell you that and actually I read that locals refer to this road as just the road the highway the trasa they don't say Kalima highway just because there's one highway and that's it so they don't need to say the full name it's just the highway Just because we're in a shared taxi, that means that we need to stop sometimes in order to pick up other passengers in some of the villages along the Kalima towards Usniera. In some of the four villages on the Kalima on the way towards Usniera, I should say. Страс Калима, трасса. Mm. Очень интересная история. У нас в Италии такие дороги нету. Тут просто много километров, тайга. Да, машины нету вообще. Интересно. Тут попадешь таким морозом ночью в поломку, можешь и остаться там надолго. Я просто перед этим видел, как-то ехали тоже с Якутска в Магадан и попали ночью, сломались. 
посередине трассы, и двое, короче, замерзли. Читал об этом, наверное, пару года назад. В прошлом году? Да, где-то вот так. В прошлом году? The construction of the Kalima Road was ordered by Stalin in 1932. The project was to be carried out by the prisoners of the gulags in the region. As the gulag prisoners were working in inhumane conditions, often working 18-hour shifts while poorly dressed for the incredibly low temperatures of the Kalima, it is estimated that at least 250,000 slave and political prisoners died during the construction of the highway. Because of permafrost, interment into the fabric of the road was deemed more practical than burying the bodies in new holes. So the bodies of the victims were regularly thrown into the foundation during construction. This is why the Kalima Highway has the very creepy honor of being colloquially referred to as the Road of Bones. So we just stopped for some fuel here on the Kalima and it's something that you absolutely have to do because you cannot afford to bypass fuel stations on the Kalima because you never know when the next one is going to be. Or actually you might know that but there will be something like 500 kilometers down the road. A peririf za toilet ili kafe? Well, it's easy to style your hair when it's frozen, right? And anyway, we just stopped at the Cafe Cuba and if you recall, we stopped already at this container of a cafe a couple of days ago on our way to Oimiakon and that is because all the way up until now, for the past two hours, we've been traveling on the old Kalima road which is basically a deviation from the main Kalima towards the villages of Tantor and Oimiakon So up until now, we've traveled to the main section of the Kalima and over there we could have gone either left back to Yakutsk or right towards Magadan and Usniera and of course we went right this cafe is right at the junction between the old Kalima and the new one which doesn't look that new anyway it's still unpaved no worries guys And we can also see here that it's getting considerably warmer now throughout the day. It's now minus 31. We're almost into the minus 20s. <laughs> but in any case, it is bound to get warmer now as we get closer to Magadan just because we're getting closer to the sea, to the Pacific Ocean as well. Or rather, to the Sea of Ahotsk, which is technically part of the Pacific Ocean just as the Mediterranean is part of the Atlantic Ocean, let's say. I think we'll have the real cold behind. It won't get into the minus 50s as it was in Oimiakon. No. <laughs> And so we continued our journey along the Kalima getting ever closer to the mining town of Usniera. For the 8 hour journey between Oimiakon and Usniera I was going to be quoted 4000 rubles, the equivalent to 50 euros at the time of filming in early 2022. This is a sum that is fairly expensive for a ride of this length even considering the usual foreign tax that I couldn't really escape. However, that is really the only option you've got to travel along these routes so you don't have much room for negotiating. So, a bit of an update. It's now 4 o'clock I believe. I really hope that the YouTube copyright system won't be able to pick up the awful music that the driver is playing but hopefully it's covered up by the noise and the sound of the vibrations of this road. Man, that's insane. Anyway, we just passed a sign that said Usniera 150 kilometers. So, 150 kilometers to go until we reach our destination for the night. And actually, these five hours that we've been on the road so far have been flying, especially compared to the 22 hours that we spent on the bus the other day in order to get to Oimiakon. Man, I've still got nightmares about that.
While navigating along the Kalima region on the Kalima road, we approach the mountains of Yakutia, which are of course called the Kalima Mountains. The bumpy road was actually making me very sleepy, so I dozed off for a bit before getting ready for the magnificent colors of the sunset while actually witnessing a truck that had broken down because of the cold. So we just saw one of the dangers of the Kalima in action. So that vehicle died and it's going to stay dead until spring at the very least. Once your vehicle is dead, frozen, there's no way you'll be able to revive it until the warm weather comes. And in the meanwhile, we're getting very close to Sniera now and I have to say, this sunset right here over the Kalima is probably one of the best sights I've ever laid my eyes on. This is amazing. Guys, we just stopped by the side of the road because the boys they need to get a leak. I thought it was a toilet, but they're just leaking by the side of the road. But that's fine, that's fine for me because I can finally take a few pictures of this amazing scenery. Wow, both left and to the right. All of this is absolutely amazing, breathtaking. <laughs> this place looks eerie as fudge. There's almost no street light at all, and a thick fog has set all over the town of Usnera. But we made it, guys! <laughs> We're sort of halfway through our journey along the Kalima Highway. We're a thousand kilometers far from Yakutsk and we've still got a thousand kilometers to go until we reach Magadan. However, there's a few things that I want to visit in Usniera. So I got dropped off here from the bus slash taxi driver, from the Marshrutka driver, because I was told that there's a hotel right here, the building over there. So let's go and check in. Let's go and eat something because I'm starving. And uh, yeah, let's wait until tomorrow morning to pay a good old visit to Usniera. Guys, let me give you a quick tour of my hotel room here in the middle of nowhere in Usniera, population 5000. I promise this tour will be fairly quick just because there's so much that I need to show you. Look at this. It's still more spacious than the EasyJet ones. We've got a nice bed. We've got this, which is the most important thing. And what else? We've got this. I can hang my jacket in here. We've got a nice picture of a frozen landscape, just as if we hadn't seen enough of these already on our way to Sniera. And this is probably the thing that I like the most. So basically here, you've got a list of all the things that you can find in this hotel. If you were to either break or steal any of these things, that's how much you would have to pay upon checking out. For example, if we were to break the bed, the cravat, this thing right here, we would have to pay 15,000 rubles, around 170 euros for our bed. If we were to break one of the chairs that we can find probably in the kitchen, it would be 2,000 rubles, around 25 euros. And last but not least, we've got Akna windows, of which there are seven in this hotel, and each comes for 7,000 rubles, around 80 euros. So, if we were to break the window tonight, on top of having to freeze all all night long with temperatures on the outside being between minus 40 and minus 50 we would have to pay 7,000 rubles can you imagine На Байкал ездил? Да, да, в Иркутске. Но Якутия, думаю, что самая понравилась. Да? Так, ну, такое ощущение быть здесь и так вообще... Холодно, горы. Холодно, да, да. да и слава богу, сегодня, сегодня утром был минус 50. Я хотел чувствовать как реальный холод. Ты почувствовал, да? Да. Господи, ну не дают, ну спокойно. Карбонара любите. Карбонара любите. Да, да, согласен. Согласен. Ну, пармезаны сами хорошие, но да, для карбонари вообще сливки. 
<coughs> нас не во надо. всех ресторанах так готовят. Да, я знаю. Готовят. Да, 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 я знаю, я знаю. Но не только в России, в Англии тоже. Я всю жизнь думала, сливки только нужны. <coughs> Пойду в комнату комнату, потому что я хочу гулять рано утром uh -huh. по нере, а uh -huh. потом выезжаю уже. Ну, зато запомните меня на всю жизнь, будете вспоминать, было. And every single time somebody asks me where I'm from, like, oh, Italy. And by the way, on the good old internet, I was just able to find the phone number of somebody who travels regularly between Usnera and the village of Susuman, which is sort of halfway through between here and Magadan, and that is because from here, To Magadan, it takes 20 hours, and I mean, I've been on a 22-hour bus ride from Yakutsk to Oymyakon already. I don't want to repeat that in order to get to Magadan in one day, so what I would like to do is get to this place first, Susuman, which, as I said, is already in the Magadan Oblast, and then, in two days from now, I will be traveling the final stretch of the Kalima Highway all the way to Magadan. Man, I'm really looking forward to the emotions that I am going to feel once I reach Magadan. So, I'm gonna try and finish making up my bed, and then after that, I will give a call to this phone number of this guy, who potentially might be taking me to Susuman tomorrow, further onwards to Magadan. Здравствуйте! Да, 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 если может и завтра в Сусуман. А, хорошо, давайте так. Я гуляю по нере, я хочу посмотреть до сопримечательности города здесь, Суснере, все равно. Поэтому, да, 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 хочу посмотреть Ленин, аэропорт, все до сопримечательности вашего города. Хорошо, спасибо. Да, а сколько цена? 7 тысяч. Ah, хорошо. Wow, let me tell you, traveling along the Kalima can get very expensive. I should start hitchhiking for free, seriously. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Thank you. Bye from the Kalima.